Okay, so I'm cleaning up this old house, right? Old farm, I think it's like 1920, 1930. Check this stuff out. Beautiful porch, though, by the way. What's rare about this thing is they have a doorbell. But check out this. That's not even the scary part though. I mean, of course the wallpaper is scary. You come up, it's a sliding door. A little unleveled. There's a door right here, a door right there, and a door right there. And this used to be a door. This right here is just a little closet. You open up this door expecting to see a room, nothing. You open up to see this one is a room. Nothing. All right, so last video cut out, but this room is blocked off. Literally. And then you'll try to come over here and it's blocked off. This door doesn't even open up because it doesn't have a handle. And then this used to be a room, as you can tell, but shut. Now, if I walk, this is just all upstairs. Though. This is all that's left up here. But if you go downstairs, fire pit, they got this little room. Yeah. We'll go to the right of the door. Windows from down up. This is crazy to me. It's just in the middle of nothing. And it's a little closet. That's the second fire pit. You come in here, our fireplace, a third fireplace, what up? Then you come into this one, which is right there by the room. Fourth. Nice little layout. Check out this bathroom, though. Yeah. Check out the tub. <laughs> Talk about old, right? Check out this light switch. Yeah, creepy as fuck. You come in here, there's the laundry room right here to the right. Come in here, there's a little bathroom. You walk in here and it's the kitchen. Very old style. Weird part about it is, there's a ladder. Then you go up there and it's a lot. Don't know if you can see it much. But stay tuned, because I'm about to go up there and show y'all what's in there. All right. There's a thing back there. Bring y'all with me. Here we go. A little crawl space. But look at the view. On top of the kitchen little window catch you on the next part these are eight horrifying facts that will probably keep you up at night horror movies use tracks that include infrasounds they cannot be heard by human ears but they are known to induce anxiety and heart palpitations 44 percent of the information shared on worldwide news is inaccurate to date, the U.S. lost six nuclear bombs and never recovered them. According to paranormal experts, when you have a nightmare, real spirits or demons are trying to contact you, but your body rejects them and wakes you up for safety. In 1954, a man arrived at an airport and had a passport issued by the country of Torrid, which does not exist. Police locked him in a high secure room and he vanished. There are computers for the Amish, which have no internet, videos, or music. There are organizations that manipulate the stock market, spending just just a few months in Antarctica can shrink your brain. There's a lot more, like for part 7.
I stayed in a cabin in the middle of nowhere this weekend and here are the best entries inside the guest log book. We're gonna start off strong with this eight-year-old uh, Trump lover who says don't look under the bed. Now this was the first entry that told us not to look under the bed specifically in the third bedroom. Now we're gonna see the don't look under the bed theme repeated several more times which was honestly terrifying. This one starts as Dear Outside World in May 2021. They've apparently been trapped in this cabin for six days. They're running out of food and she's concerned whether or not they're gonna make it. Then, you know, for a little humor, um, I don't know what Caitlin did, but she is a poopy butt now. There was a rabid skunk problem. This one is special. This is a 2026 entry. We do have a time traveler in our midst. Uh, good luck, Baker's Clan. I hope you survived. This place is really cool. Ha ha ha, don't look under the bed. Don't look under the bed. Then we had a short horror story about what was under the bed. It didn't help that the four-year-old with us came out of that room and said, we can't play in there. There's someone under the bed. Okay, I'm confused about this backyard here. Oh. Like, this is supposed to be my backyard, right? And then when I go downstairs, I know it's not going to be the same. What the I'm literally confused. I swear. I s I don't know. Like, where's all my cans? <laughs> I'm going to show you something that's going to open your mind. Potentially. As a medium, I get to work with spirit every day and it's wonderful. I get to reconnect people with lost loved ones. You also get people knocking on your door because they've got things happening to them. They're gonna hear voices, seeing things. And more often than not, that's their own loved ones and, and their own spirit guides. And it means that they're opening up mediumistically, which is wonderful. The other thing you get your doorbell ringing for is for people who they've got things going on, the bump in the night, right? And they don't know how to deal with it. So well, who do you call? We call a medium. And as a medium and para paranormal investigator, I got to get called out to quite a few things. And I've got to see quite a few things. And we did paranormal investigations for entertainment purposes like Pluckley, but we also used to go around and help people in their homes to help you know, provide reassurance or wherever else was needed. I got a call from a gentleman who was living in a, um, uh, living in a place that was being converted into, into accommodation. Uh, it used to be a, uh, an orphanage in the Victorian era and it used to be, uh, and it was a school, which was also closed down. It's on very old and ancient ground and it's the home to a number of, spirits um, it, they've been uh, it witnessed poltergeist activity and a, a number of other things apparently the, the, the site when it was at school at one point was was it was a there was a reported possession bit of, a, bit of a scary place right he phoned me up asked me about going in for a possible investigation I said approached it with a little bit of skepticism and said, have you got anything that suggests that it is actually a haunting or is it, is it just be hearing voices? Or, you know, what's, what's going on? He sent me this video. Have a look. Show yourself again. Up a bit, up a bit, please. Up, up. That's lovely. It's really nice to see you and I hope you're enjoying our company as we're enjoying your company. And that's pretty cool, right? I mean, the skeptics amongst us, and I welcome skepticism, might say, oh, it's just a reflection of the fire in the, in, in, you know, the lens or whatever, but you watch, it, you watch it again and you'll see that, whatever it is, moves very independently to the flames. I've got more footage to come and we're just getting started. Have a look. Let me know what you think it is. I'll meet you in the comments. Like and follow for part two. Are you doing this because you care about me? If you gave a shit about me, you wouldn't have sold me the fucking drugs in the first place. But you did. You fucking did. So open the goddamn door. Open the 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 door. In your opinion, 
who is the biggest psychopath of all time and why? Oscar Derlwanger, the guy managed to get fired from a concentration camp for mistreatment of prisoners. Albert Fish. He was a serial killer who would kidnap children, torture them, molest them, kill them, eat them afterwards, and send letters to their parents describing how they tasted. Not a nice guy 0 out of 10.